So honestly, the hardest part about moving into this new studio is all the noise pollution. This AC unit will kick on at any minute. Everything from upstairs really travels downstairs and echoes throughout the studio as well because the floors are tile, and I have no idea how to get around it. So if you have an idea, leave me a comment down below, please. Now, roll intro. What's good everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer, content creator, and cinematographer. And you guys loved my sit down and talk video that I posted two weeks ago, really unpacking the life of being a lonely photographer and lonely creative entrepreneur. You guys let me know you relate it with me. So I wanna do the same thing again, but this time on a different topic of when people tell you that your prices are too expensive and how it kind of makes us feel like crap. And they treat us like the bad guy too. But instead of doing it normally, we're going to be doing some edits on Lightroom Mobile. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to call this like edit time with Sid or edits and tea, something like that. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by myself. Yes, my Lightroom preset pack is available on my store. The link is up there or in the description down below. Now let's get into it. Yes. Shameless plug. So what really sparked this initial idea for the topic was I was online and I saw this article where it said couple pays $800 for a wedding photographer and the photos come out so grainy and dark that the iPhone photos came out better. Now, it could have went two ways, but to me it kind of made me feel like people were gonna get the idea that iPhone photos were better than a professional photographer because, I mean, a lot of people today, and I think it's pretty evident, don't really understand the value of photography. And so you'll get people in today's industry, in the industry today, who are like, oh yeah, your prices are far too expensive. Even though they're paying upwards of $40,000 for their wedding, basically what they're telling you is no, we just don't value photography. And that's not a slam on people. Part of it is the photographer's fault. We really haven't been conveying to our clients the way we should. You know, everything that really goes into running a photography business. And it's easy for us to sit here and be like, oh, well, they're just cheap, but we have to put ourselves in their shoes where we're like, hey, I know you don't understand the fact that I am not pocketing all of this money because I feel like that's what a lot of people think. When they see your expensive prices, they think that you're just trying to, you know, scam them. Even somebody in a F Stoppers article was like, oh, for the wedding industry is just a big scam. And that's how people are perceiving it because we're not letting them know that there's other business expenses as well that goes into what we do. They don't understand that their wedding fee or their session fee goes to our continuing education for the education courses that a lot of us elect to do so that we get better at our craft for the thousands of dollars we spend in marketing per year to all the new equipment that comes out that helps us up our game as photographers. In addition to paying for websites, URLs, having a, uh, what's it called, a custom email address, all that stuff, all of that goes into our pricing. Now, it's easy for us to also get defensive though, and that's something we really wanna work on. We can explain those things, that there's a lot of costs that go into being a photographer. But furthermore, I also think that there's a point where we can also start wearing that as a badge of honor, especially when it comes to friends and family members who somewhat make us feel bad for having high prices. And that's happened to me a few times. I've had um, distant cousins who I have no idea who they are start cussing me out in Facebook messages because they were referred to me and I didn't like off the bat give them a discount. And I guess my thing is, is like, do you go to Walmart or do you go to Target and ask them for free food. And that could be a two-edged sword because some people may. I had a few people I know tell me they do that and they laugh about it. And I'm like, that's not right because you're still taking money out of somebody's mouth. Anyway, I digress. So you can start wearing that as a badge of honor. And that's one thing I wish our industry would start doing more of because it really, really, really makes me sad. And I know a few photographers out here who are literally shooting weddings, 40 to 50 weddings per year for like three years into their career. 
And that's a lot. It's a lot on your body. It's a lot on your time. We didn't start businesses to not have time, right? And they do it because their prices are so low and they're afraid to move up because they feel like people will no longer value their work. And I think that's something we have to get out of the mentality of doing because if everybody in the industry collectively charged what they should, with the exception of doing it as a hobby, because I feel like those are the people, people who are seasoned photographers who do it just as a hobby and still have a career, those are the people who should be catering to the weddings who can't afford the $6,000 photographer. Everybody deserves photography, but you know, part of the reason this couple got bad photos is they didn't vet people properly. You know, and everybody deserves a big break. I'm not saying that you shouldn't shoot the photographer who pays $800. You pay $800 for their first wedding or $500 for their first wedding, but your prices definitely shouldn't be $500 after your first wedding because you're not a new photographer anymore and you have that experience and you know what you're going to need or want to do differently. And I guess that's the key, but I digress. Back to the main point. One of the things we need to start learning how to do as photographers is simple, and it's really being able to say respectfully to people, you're just simply not my ideal client. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And you know what? That sounds rude at first, but when you think about it, there's a little bit of a point, and it opens up a conversation starter to, you know, what may ensue next. The reason why I say that is because every company out there has an ideal client. For example, some people don't buy Tide because it's too expensive. They may buy a different brand of detergent. Furthermore, when you get to luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, Tiffany, Coach, and everything else, some people choose not to buy those brands because they are too expensive, but that's for a reason. We're not these people's ideal clients if all we're looking at is how much it costs up front and not seeing the value that really lies underneath the product they're selling. And that's the key. It opens up a conversation starter to be like, you know, Amy, or once Amy responds, well, Amy, my ideal client really understands the value of what I do. They understand that there's a little bit more that goes into photographing a wedding and running a wedding business. I have education I have to pay for, I have gear I have to pay for, and you know, you can go down the list and explain it to them. But also, it's a very valuable teaching moment. And it's a way to also remind them and let them know too that after their cake is eaten, after their dress has been hung up, and you won't be able to fit it anymore in like 10 years because everybody gets comfortable in their marriage, so on and so forth, that the one thing you're gonna have to remember that day by is the photographer. And that's what we really need to start stressing to our couples is the fact that, you know, we're creating these memories for people that otherwise would be lost in time. And that the value in choosing a good photographer and a photographer that knows what they're doing is the fact that you know with 100% confidence that that day is going to be captured correctly. Because there is no redos at a wedding. There is no second chances. And when you do things like booking a photographer that isn't ready to photograph a wedding or you skimp on photography because you don't understand or realize the value of it, it could be a more costly mistake in the end. The couple in the article had to, I think they reshot with a different photographer, which is an expense they probably could have avoided if they would have went with a professional photographer the first time, one who was seasoned in the industry. Um, and that, that's just the key. That was money that could have been saved there. But an even more costly mistake that they just are gonna to wanna to avoid is the fact that if that wedding is shot incorrectly and you can't afford to do a reshoot, then you are going to be stuck with those photos forever. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That is it today for editing and chats. We are all done. If you guys did enjoy this video, leave me a comment down below letting me know how much you did. Be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications if you already have not. And also follow the YouTube fam. Their links are in the description down below, as well as my social media links also in the description down below. Remember, if you're ever feeling uncreative, uninspired, or just wanna give up in life, every Every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney. I'll see you next time. Peace out.